The diagram below shows an electrochemical cell used to plate a copper bracelet with silver. So that's quite useful. We are talking about here electroplating, all right? Using an electric current to plate this thing with silver. Immediately, I'm noticing here I have a battery. That is important. So what type of cell is this in comparison to the one we've just done? This is a electrolysis reaction. It is going to be electroplating. And think about that. We've got an input of an electric current. So is this a spontaneous reaction? No, it's not. It can't be. Okay. The last one we did was galvanic. We didn't have electricity, electricity as an input. We got electricity out. All right. Here, we have electricity input, so it's a non-spontaneous reaction. All right. Let's have a look at some of the questions. We've got the battery there. Oh, there's our copper bracelet. And we've got a silver solution and A, which is probably a silver anode as well. A silver electrode. Write down the name of the process during which the copper bracelet is co coated in silver. So we could speak about its electroplating. That would be fine. You could also say this is electrolysis. Which one, A or B, and B is the bracelet, go back to it, B is the bracelet, A is this electrode, is the anode of this reaction. Support your answer by writing the half reaction that, that takes place at the anode. Now, the anode, you are always thinking anode, sorry, anode is oxidation. Anode oxidation, cathode reduction. Have you heard of that little phrase, red cat? Okay, red for reduction, cat for cathode. Cathode reduction, anode oxidation. So, if we have a look at it, we've got, let's analyze the scenario a little bit. What do we want to happen at the bracelet? Well, the bracelet, if I draw it there, we want silver to go onto that bracelet. So what reaction do we want to happen there? Well, surely we want ions, Ag plus ions, to gain an electron to form Ag solid metal, silver, all right? Whereas this one is Aq, aqueous. We want for the ions in solution to go onto and solidify around this copper bracelet. And that makes sense, doesn't it? Because you want it to be silver plated. Well, what process is that? That process is going to be reduction. How do I know that? Well, it's going to be taking up one of the electrons. So, that has to be reduction, which means and that was all happening at B. At A, therefore, and A is this part here, okay, it must be that Ag is going to form Ag plus ions that are aqueous by kicking out an electron. Okay, so solid going into aqueous. Right? That process is going to be oxidation. So if I go across to this question, and let's see if we can answer the question, which one, A or B, it's definitely A, not B, is the anode? So A is the anode, and it's the oxidation reaction. And the oxidation reaction would be written Ag solid forms Ag1 plus plus an electron. Now you might say, and that was aqueous. You might say, well, where did you get that, Tracy? I got that from the data sheet, okay? And I can go and find it. There it is. This is the reaction that we're looking at, and we're specifically looking at Ag forming Ag1 plus, plus an electron. So I read it off the data sheet. 
write down the reduction half reaction. Well, I've done that already. The reduction half reaction is going to be, we said it was going from Ag plus, it gained an electron to form Ag solid. Now, notice what I'm doing there is literally writing this, the same, in this case, the same reaction both directions. But I'm working with these and checking that I'm writing the, that the charge is balanced on both sides. Remember I said to you, that's a hint for you, that you know that you're doing this correctly. The charge is misbalanced. Left-hand side must be equal to right-hand side. Okay, here I've got one positive plus one negative, overall neutral, and no charge, so neutral. Right, that's a hint to you that to know where, you know where you're putting the electron if you haven't been able to read it down correctly. Write down the name of the substance that is reduced. It would be silver ions, and the iron part is very important because it was the silver one plus iron, okay, that gained an electron to form silver metal. Write down the name or formula of the silver solution used in order to achieve the desired appearance. Now, once again, we want something that is going to be soluble, that will allow for Ag ions to be in solution, aqueous, and nitrate is a good one. We had it in the previous question as well. Silver nitrate is a very good, um, good one to use because, again, nitrate is soluble. You want something that is a soluble, um, any soluble silver solution. So our suggestion here is to work with silver nitrate iron um, as the formula. Silver nitrate. Apart from Coating the metal with another metal, state one other use of the above process. Okay, so we're thinking purifying metals. That's a good, good um, one. We've got the production of chemicals. We can have um, a whole host of, of different things. They're asked only specifically for one. We could also have the extraction of metals from their ore. If you think of, um, of potentially the aluminium production. In industry, most metals are coated with other metals to give them a more desirable appearance. Give a reason why, apart uh, from an economical point of view, so they're specifically thinking about money here, why is it not advisable, keyword, not advisable, to coat gold with silver? Well, this is making sense. Gold is more expensive than silver. So if anything, and we're wanting it to have a desirable appearance, you would want to go with the one that is most expensive. Gold is more expensive than silver. That would be a, a logical conclusion. And making sense, you're thinking about this in reality, in real life. Copper pipes have proved to be ideal for water supply for our homes. Plumbers have replaced iron pipes Okay, so they used to be iron with now copper pipes because iron rusts. And if you think about what that's going to mean, if you've got iron pipes and they're rusted, you're going to have a leaking into the walls, right? So damp issues, problems like that. Iron rusts when exposed to oxygen and moisture. And obviously you're going to have, if, they're going, if water's going through these pipes, there's going to be plenty of moisture around. Refer to the relative strengths of reducing agents to explain why iron corrodes quicker as in comparison to the copper. So once again, I'm going to go to this table, and I want to find copper. Okay. There's one copper. There's another copper. Let's pick this one. And we want to speak about iron. Now, again, there's going to be a multiple... Iron, there's one here. Let's go with the two plus. Doesn't really matter because 
I will notice that all the, co the iron ones are higher up on this table, table two, 4B, in comparison to copper. So what does that mean? Well, that means that if we look at this table, right, and sorry, I've gone too far here, this is increasing re oxidizing ability, so the ability to be reduced, whereas on the other side, that is increasing reducing ability. The, therefore, the higher up the, on the table, the easier it is for something like iron to be oxidized. Okay? So if it's increasing reducing ability, it's causing something else to be reduced. How is it doing that? Well, it itself is oxidized. So we need to go back to our answer here and say Fe is easily oxidized. No. Dized. Okay. Why do I know that? Because it is a a strong has a strong reducing ability. Maybe we can say has a strong reducing ability. It's easily oxidized, has a strong reducing ability, um, or as a strong reducing agent is another way of saying it. Therefore, it is more easily oxidized 